Hey everyone, welcome to the Tensegrity series short practice where we'll move through the practice with a little bit more speed and assume that you've already watched the long practice that will touch on some of the principles of this series with a little more detail and attention. So you'll have your props, your block for underneath your pelvis, maybe your wooden dowel if you have it or something in place of that. And let's come down onto our back with the prop underneath our pelvis. And if you have a wood prop, you can put a blanket over top for a little more softness. Dropping in to your back body, your breath, and starting to find that radiant breath. A little more ease in your hips and shoulders. Some softness in the outer shell of your body A moment to land and then we'll let our legs come up as you're ready you might take the dowel in between your index finger and thumb and as you take your arms over your head your legs can move away from you keeping a relative stillness to your spine placing the weight at the top of the rim of your pelvis the bottom of your ribs and the back of your head. You might breathe a little longer than your movements here. And you can always bend your knees more or minimize the movements to stay in the realm of ease, intentionally softening the bigger muscles to find some more strength and support in the structures, muscles, fascia closer to the bones. And you can let that come down, place your prop to the side, take that prop out from underneath your pelvis, and you can take your dowel behind the backs of your knees if you like, or not use the dowel and come into the twists making that smile in the air with your knees and letting your arms and rib basket move opposite of your knees. You can also take out the dowel, place it in between your palms here and work the legs a little longer. Coming back to your breath, softness in your eyes and jaw and some attention to keeping your shoulder blades more flush to your rib basket instead of protruding and minimizing a back bend in your upper back here. You can bring that down. Take your hands behind the back of your head, right knee in towards your chest, and hover that right leg out with some grounding in your left foot, your grounded left foot, and your back close to the floor. And draw that in and switch sides. Perhaps you're getting that sensation of holding a pencil behind your toes, activating the structure of the arch of your foot. Back close to the floor and drawing that in. Coming down with your head, right leg comes up to oscillate up and down. You might hold on underneath your ribs, giving your diaphragm a slight massage. Perhaps this pushes your radiant breath more into the back of your body. Switching legs here, left leg up, grounding through the right, foot to keep the pelvis fairly level. Staying in that realm of ease, bend your knees as much as you need to. Breath in and out. Gravity fed with your body here. And release your left leg and roll to your right side. Lean a little back into your left grounded foot and lift and lower your right inner leg. You might add in the arm part 
to this, a crisscross movement through the body. Leaning slightly back to potentially feel the toning of the deeper abdominal layers here. Inhale. Exhale. Right foot down, you might tuck that bottom toe, be a little more on your right side for your top leg. Lifting and lowering, keeping the top inner leg reaching forwards. Checking in for sounds, smooth trajectory of movement. Ease in your shoulders and hips. Can always bend your knee more. Take your time to roll to your back and roll over onto your other side. We'll start with that same movement. External leg lifts. Inhale. Exhale. Right foot plants behind you, lean a little back and inner leg lifts. Perhaps using that top arm as you pull your top arm back, you might feel an opening across the front of your chest. Let your weight drop. Let your breath drop a little lower if you can. Intentionally softening those bigger muscles of the body and rolling onto your back. Take a moment to land. Locate the three points of contact, the pelvis, the low ribs, and the skull. Hands behind the back of the head, knees in, curling in and opening up. Finding these little wood bug curls, like those little bugs that curl into those spherical little balls. Finding this flexion and extension of your spine. Perhaps you straighten your legs. If you're keeping your legs in the bent position, you might catch the dowel behind your knees as a way to create symmetry through the two sides and also perhaps find a little space at the front of the knee joint. Letting your legs come down, letting your head land, taking a moment to land here to let your weight drop. And you can take that prop back underneath your pelvis. Hands overhead, fingertips find the ground, legs up, and start to scissor your legs with the weight melting down through the top of the pelvis, bottom of the ribs, and your head. Inhale. Exhale. You might add in your arms, maybe your head. Your head can move side to side over your top arm. With soft eyes, you might gaze left to right. Speed is up to you. The bend of your knees is up to you. Coming back to the weight, plummeting through those places. Some intentional softening of those bigger muscles. Muscles around the shoulders and hips and low back. As you find some stillness in your spine, you might pause and switch your arms moving opposite of your legs. Finding your own rhythm here. 
watching if you're shifting too much left to right on the pelvis and seeing if you can keep that steadiness to the pelvis and low back. And your legs come down, your hands can come onto your low ribs, or perhaps you cup your eyes with your hands here and draw your knees in, one knee in towards the chest and the other one reaches out. On a round of 45 degree, you can always adjust that. You might explore that pencil underneath the toes feeling. And explore this bending and straightening of your legs. Finding some tone at the deeper abdominal area to keep the torso steady without restricting your breath. You can find that radiant breath. Giving your eyes a break here if you like. Perhaps you're exploring a little bit of a quieter range in your movements, so silent and smooth, if available. And it's also okay to lean into if your body wants to talk and make those cracks and pops. You can come on in here, find that opening and closing of your inner legs, either with the feet together or with them apart. And you can shift to the right pelvis, but keep the ribs centered to find a mini twist in the shape, maybe a little more load on the right hip here, and then you can come to center and shift over to the left side of the pelvis, but keep the ribs fairly centered. Small or big movements relative to you. If you're feeling rubs and clicks and pops in your hip, perhaps you make the movements a little smaller. You can come into the center and explore a more central position as you open and close your knees. The weight drops down. Your eyes might even sink down into your skull here and then you can Get yourself situated on your prop and perhaps hold your legs or not and have your knees bend and straighten. Speed is up to you. You might be exploring a slower speed. Softening in the front pocket of your hips, the front pocket of your armpit, perhaps your jaw and your eyes as you explore this movement in your knees. Perhaps you're exploring softening your quadriceps and your hamstrings a little, as you might find a little more ease in this functional basic movement. Letting your legs come down. We'll come back into the twists. You can move your prop out. Perhaps use your dowel behind your knees or in between your hands, coming back to the twists. Your head can either move with your feet if you're rolling your head side to side or perhaps opposite. Your breath, perhaps slowing your breath even though you might find a cadence, rhythm to your movement. Moving around your center. Inhale, weight drops. Exhale, coming into the center, you can place your prop down and you can start by opening and closing through your inner line of your legs. This can be done with your legs quite bent. You can also use your arms in this way, like you're opening your wingspan. Perhaps notice if there's a part of your back body that wants to catch a sky hook and lift up towards the sky. You can really drop your weight. Perhaps you do your arms and your legs at opposite uh, movements. When your arms open, your legs come in. 
You might need to drop a little more in your back ribs, noticing that. And then bringing in the knees, hands behind the back of your head, curling in back into the curl ups. You might have your dowel there for support behind your knees. Or you might take that out and explore the legs a little straighter. How's your jaw? How's the tension around your eyes here? And coming back to situating yourself with the prop underneath your pelvis. Your legs can come up here and your dowel can come in between your index finger and your middle finger and you can take this dowel like the first movement of your sun salutation over your head and back down giving some attention to keeping the bottom low ribs on the ground or at least weighted dropping onto the ground so there's minimal movement in your rib area and perhaps you can soften the fronts of your armpits a little or a lot and you might open your feet here and switch this to more of like a chopping movement through your arms again connecting to the weight at the bottom of your ribs all the way through the movement especially when you take the arms overhead always an option to drop your feet to the ground and have your lower body in constructive rest legs come back up you can place the dowel to the side that little twist so you're on the right side of the pelvis and here you might bend your right leg finding chin mudra index finger and thumb together and opening your wing span to place your palms to face down to the ground just hover there and bring them back up so the twist here is happening in your lower body but your left lung still wants to meet the ground symmetrical weight if you can coming down through your upper back stretching your fingers apart as you open up your wings here and your head can go side to side let's keep this with the arms switch legs switch side the legs so you're on the left side of your pelvis and your left leg bends right leg leans away i often think bowling ball weight in the head region eyes soft jaw soft fronts of the armpits soft weight dropping back into center twist to the right weight on the right side pinky fingers come together and open the wing span so that the palms go up stretching apart your arms like you're stretching sticky taffy apart in between your hands let your low ribs drop at the back watch that movement of your arms doesn't pop up your ribs so heavy and grounded in your ribs switching sides with your legs left leg bends right leg reaches left side of the pelvis is heavy Just pulling apart your fingers widening your shoulder blades exploring some nerve flossing movements here into the center let your feet drop ground into your feet lift your pelvis a little but continue to let your weight drop down through the three points chin mudra hands pinky fingers together over your pelvis back so the hands touch over your head describing an oval or a circle giving some attention to the differences in your shoulders perhaps you're feeling that sneaky strength aspect to the back side 
of your body here, the glutes, hamstring area. And letting that drop down, your block can come out from underneath you. As you drop your hips back down, rolling over onto your right side, outstretch your right arm, you can hook the back of your skull with your right fingers and perhaps your feet pop up, your knees pop apart a bit. You explore your left shoulder joint with your hand up in the air, chin mudra and circling through that top arm, big or small circles. Your rhythm of breath. You might grip onto the base of your skull with your right fingers or give yourself a massage there. Switch directions with your circles. Perhaps you write a love letter on the ceiling in cursive, exploring your shoulder sounds, hydration, support at your shoulder joint coming onto your back there and rolling over onto the other side. Your feet can pop up. Let your weight drop through your left side and explore circles on that side, switching directions. Connecting to your radiant breath, you can explore writing something on the ceiling. Coming back to center on your back. You're welcome to can take the prop back underneath your pelvis to either take one leg into Virasana, the half hero shape, perhaps with that block under your pelvis, perhaps with the block behind your head, with your palms facing down over your head. And this option, if it's feeling like a lot for your ankles and your knees, you can lean onto your side and minimize your back bend, but work your one leg into Virasana in that way. Working with that drop of weight through the pelvis, low ribs and back of the head, and if you're in the variation with the block behind your head, you might roll your head side to side for your breath in. Your breath out. Now as you're ready, you might switch sides there. Perhaps you're coming onto your side for that one. Minimizing that back bend and maximizing that stretch sensation at the front of your left upper leg for your breath in. Your breath out. For some of us, this form can feel a little frustrating. So take it as you need to one day at a time. Be gentle with yourself. lean to the side and take that foot out and perhaps you roll your knees in a circle one way and then the other reminding your center of your hip joint to soften any amount there and then we'll roll up a little a couple of rolls or one big roll up holding yourself into a seed perching in the space between your tailbone and your sit bones growing up into your Navasana, which could be holding on or letting go, exploring that intentional softening of the big muscles. Maybe you wiggle your fingers and toes and then low down, curl through your body, hollow body through the front. Take a breath in and out there. 
and roll back up. Could be holding on to the backs of your legs for your breath in and your seed. Your breath out. Finding your boat pose, Navasana. Finding maybe a little more softening through your outer shell, some more strength deep to the spine and to your inner legs. Rolling down. Your breath in. Your breath out. Hollow body at the front. Rolls you all the way back up. Seed. Navasana. Half Navasana. All the way up into your seed, feet plant, knees widen. Shift your weight forwards or however you do. Come through your Malasana squat into your child's form. Round forwards and come into your knee up dog. And then up and back, rounding through your spine to your child's. Like a wave exploring this rounding forwards. And back. And you might start with this kind of low back, mid back, upper back rounding. Or you could come from the opposite direction and start with your chin tuck, upper back rounding, mid back and then low back as you move back. So a couple different ways of cresting that wave. You can explore some free form movements there. into your child's form or perhaps lying flat on your abdomen with your legs outstretched. Notice any shifts, any changes. You might sit back onto your heels and rise up into a kneeling position or cross-legged position. And check in any sense of settling or noticing how you're feeling there. May have peace.